What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. And this is our weekly show where we review the magic stories. And this week, while last week we said that we were going to be here this week with the Kaito origin stories, uh, there were then a lot more saga stories that came out. Yeah. So if you missed last week's video, definitely go check it out up in the I card in the top corner because we reviewed the first four saga stories which were awesome. I really appreciated being able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I looked online and realized that since that episode, there were six more. So, you know, my, uh, not quite OCD, but my particularity really would have preferred to have done five and five, but that's not how life worked out. So here we are. Today we're reviewing six. Last week we did four. Today we're doing six. And then hopefully next week we can get into the origin stories, uh, the first of those two, and then after that, the main stories that they released, like, Monday or Tuesday of, um, of this week that this video is coming out on. So, lots of stuff to cover, but today we're just doing the other saga stories. Which, uh, my quick review at the top, uh, I guess I should read off which ones they are. They are. Um, we're reviewing the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty saga stories, The Dragon Kami Reborn by Emily Tang, the Shattered States Era by Grace Fung. The Era of Enlightenment, or just Era of Enlightenment, by Grace Fung. Teachings of the Kirin by Emily Tang. The Modern Age by Emily Tang. And, I'm sure I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, but I'm trying my best. Beside You, Beside You, Reaches Skyward, also by Emily Tang. So those are the six stories that we reviewed. My quick review at the top is, I think these are fantastic. I really, really love that they're doing these. They are short and sweet and should take you no time at all to read. Right. They have gorgeous artwork that you're going to see on the cards, but the, here they're huge. Yeah. And you should really be able to develop more of an appreciation for them in this format, even if you're looking at it on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and just, it's just, so, they're small, they're bite-sized, and it gives you so much flavor, literally and figuratively, for the plane and, and what we're about to come across. I, I don't know that that's a quick review, but it is, like, I think you should read each and every one of these, the ones we did last week and this week, because they're just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, they're great. I, like, I, I just, I, I hope, I hope <laughs> that any time there are sagas in the future, they do this exact thing. That they make these little stories around them, put them up, I mean, maybe make them accessible from the story tab, like, at all, um, but still amazing regardless like that's just you know how the website is structured not about how the stories are being done like these are just so good so that's the that's our quick review if you have not read these stories yet or these these little saga stories for yourselves uh we are trying to remove as many barriers as possible and because i just said that they're not actually in the story tab they're going to be a little bit harder to find but if you're here watching this video, they're not going to be, because they are all linked for you in the description down below. And that's just the six that we're reviewing this week. If you want the four from last week, they're in the description of last week's video. So definitely go, like I said, that I card up at the top will be able to uh, take you there. So uh, definitely click or tap that if you want to check that out. Before we get into the full review itself, I just want to say, if you are appreciating the things that we're doing here, thank you. We appreciate you as well. Um, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. You will get notifications whenever any of our videos come out, including more of these Kamigawa Neon Dynasty uh, story reviews in the coming weeks. So please feel free to do that. Um, likes and shares help out immensely. They really, really do. The subbing and the ringing the bell helps you because you get to find out our, find our stuff. The likes and the shares are kind of more for us uh, and for other people to find our stuff so that we can keep getting bigger and growing and continuing to deliver these things to you in more ways. Um, so the comments are most important, in my opinion, just so that um, that dialogue can be more than just one sided. Yeah. The two of us talking at an abyss. Yeah. Um, you know, sort of providing the other side of that conversation uh, really helps us and the viewers. Yeah. So. Give us give us your thoughts, your opinions, especially, I mean, any of them at all, no matter what, but especially if they differ from us so that we can continue that conversation, right? We're never looking for arguments. That's not what we're here for, but at no, least... but we want to know other points of view. Different if, perspectives. Especially if the two of us are agreeing 100% with each other. It's really going to help 
to, to hear your perspective if it's different from ours. Uh, and, and it helps your fellow viewers as well because they get to read or see a different perspective in that way as right. well. So definitely. Um, and that and, and hearing so many different perspectives might help them come up with their own perspective on it, which might be different still. Yeah. And so anything and everything that you want to talk about, comment section down below. I don't care if you leave 75 comments because you just leave a comment every time you think of something. Don't think you're spamming us. We want that. Give yeah. that to us as much as you want to. We want to hear it <laughs> from you. Um, and then last but not least for us, for our like little self-promotion, don't forget that we go live every Monday and Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time right here on this channel. So since this comes out on Thursday, this Friday we will be playing through more of X-Men Legends for the PlayStation 2 with this guy, my boy uh, Iceman. I'll yeah. be playing him as much as humanly possible because that's just how I do. Um, but there are lots of other characters as well. And if you have a particular X-Man that is your favorite, come into chat, let us know, and maybe we can use that character. Yeah. Who knows? So um, that's 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern right here on this channel. And then Mondays from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern as well, we play MTG Arena. So if you like Magic the Gathering, you can come here for that. This past week, we did a uh, Crimson Vow draft where we went 0-2 in the draft and then proceeded to win six games in a row and um, go 6-2 and two by the end, or 6-3 and three then. We lost the last one. It, but it blew my mind. Insane. <laughs> insane. <laughs> Even hearing you say that just now made me say, wow. And it was, then I was like, oh yeah, I was there. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> it happened. I saw it happen. <laughs> but it's still shocking. It was crazy. So, I mean, obviously, if you want to watch that VOD, you can do that. It's on the channel. But, you know, if you're there live, it's probably even that much cooler. So... Uh, thank you again for any and all support that you're all willing to give. It yeah. truly means a lot. So uh, thank you for that. So on to the full review itself. Let's go to the Dragon Kami Reborn. For me personally, and if you missed last week's video, I guess we'll preface by saying that we did not know the original Kamigawa stories from champions and saviors and, and betrayers. <clears throat> we didn't. And I, I know I said those out of order. I, I don't really care right now. Um, we didn't originally... I didn't the difference. Yeah, I think it goes champions, betrayers, saviors. Just kind of makes sense. Yeah, um, I guess from like a chronological standpoint. Right, because you'd have champions, then they get betrayed, and then they get saved. Right. But anyway, um, but we, we didn't know it before, but especially with these saga stories and with the little um, information on Wizards' actual story page... We were able to read up on Kamigawa, read up on the characters. God forbid the story page was updated however long ago on Kamigawa. So um, that helped us out immensely, and we really appreciate that. So if I get, if we get something wrong or we're like confused about something because we didn't understand that story, let us know. Definitely yeah. leave that in the comments. We really appreciate it because we haven't been back here for almost 20 years. So it, you know, forgive us, I guess, for not really knowing those things, and we would love some updated perspective if you have been following along ever since. But, speaking of which, with the dragon Kami Reborn, the, the, Kami, the dragons from Kamigawa mean a lot to me personally. Um, Before you say yes, please, that, go ahead, I sorry. don't mean to interrupt, no, no, please. but I just wanted to say, if, if in these saga stories that you read, you find things that you feel are contradictory to the original Kamigawa stories, I would love to hear about that in the comments as well. Sure. Definitely. Just wanted to uh, inject that into a portion of this review I appreciate where it. it actually makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that's appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, I, I mean, again, just that comment section, we just want you in there constantly. That's, that's really what it is, right? Um, for the Dragon Kami Reborn story, again by Emily Tang, uh, the, the Kamigawa dragons mean a lot to me because this was, I guess, to date myself a bit. Um, Kamigawa originally came out when we were in high school, which is also where we met. But um, came out when we were in high school. I collected a lot of the cards. And uh, Yosei, the Morning Star, for me personally, I had a, a white deck that I was playing at the time. Kitchen table deck, definitely, or lunch table deck at that point. Um, but it was a good deck. I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I still own it. It's, in fact, in the drawer behind that camera right now. Um, but uh, Yosei was in that deck, so that card in general meant a lot to me. And then I did a lot of Modern Masters playing. And in a lot of the Modern Masters sets, if not like a bunch of the original ones, 
the Kamigawa dragons were reprinted and reprinted and reprinted a lot in those, and opening those was always cool for me, even if they weren't like the most valuable thing that you could open in Modern Masters, it was always fun to be like, oh cool, this, or whatever. So, they meant a lot to me in that regard. Now, does that mean I wanted them to be reprinted here? No, I wanted to see the update to their story, and I'm actually genuinely looking forward to it because there's that like promo art that they've been showing for this set with a bunch of dragons on it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Those are just dragons. <laughs> like we have the Kamigawa dragons from the old sets, but now we have these like new dragons that look cool. And they have like, they share colors because obviously they're, they're all five colors, right? They're each one of the five colors. So of course they would share colors with the original, but they look drastically different. Well, they are different, but they're also the same. Right. Because this Dragon Kami Reborn talks about how all of the dragons, save for Ryusei, or Ryusei? Uh, Ryusei, I guess, because I said Yosei earlier. And again, if I'm mispronouncing, leave a pronunciation guide or something. I, I, don't, I don't speak the language, so I do apologize. Uh, I'm trying my best, I promise. And I don't mean to offend, of course, with, with messing anything up. But Ryusei was the only one that lived originally from the original dragons. And then Jugen was brought back by the, um, the Araki, actually, resurrected Jugen. And so when Jugen came back, Jugen sought out the kind of spiritual energy of the remaining three. Uh, and then Jugen and Ryusei went into an egg with the essences and... You know, like you do. Right. You just voluntarily go into an egg, um, even <laughs> though you're a giant bug. dragon. <laughs> and um, Me and my buddy are going into this egg. And they were there for, I think it said like five years or something like that. Uh, and then the egg hatches and the new forms of all five of these dragons come out. Now, based on the art, Jugen looks to be multicolored now because it says that Jugen is the prominent featured uh, character. And so... It looks, Jugen is either five colored or tri colored or something like that now. Yeah. Um, and the other dragons look to be either monocolored or at least like uh, who, who I assume is Yosei looks to be white and maybe blue because their face was blue uh, and the body or the tail was white. But all the others seem to be their monocolored selves. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. It's such a cool yeah. way to do it and it. it shows new forms because uh, the reason was, which as a fan of Nyssa, you probably appreciated, Jugen, as the green dragon, fan of Nyssa, um, noticed when she returned to the plane that she was no longer connected to the world of Kamigawa. Right. Like things had changed and so she was no longer connected. So the reason that the dragons needed to reform themselves or come back in a new form is because they needed to reconnect with the land again, or be connected to the land again. And so they had to obtain new forms to be able to do so. And so, meaning that kind of Jugen seemed to be the one above all, since Jugen was the one who gathered together all of her brethren, um, which is very interesting to me. I just, I like the story. I like that that idea and, and how they're doing that. So, yeah, I appreciated it a lot. Uh, I hope, you know, it, people can can leave their thoughts as well. But that's what I had about that particular okay. story. Yeah, I don't really think I had anything to say about that. It just seems awesome. Like, I'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing what these new dragons look like. I assume they're going to have the same names. Um, but then, you know, what what their new forms allow them to do with their different abilities and what they look like and etc. So, uh, then we had the second of these six. So, like, it's technically, like, since we did the first four, this is, like, story five and now six. But... Just bear with me. I apologize for the, the way that it's not. We can't really number them. And bear with me and the fact that I can't get my hair out of my face. <laughs> it's making me nuts. Uh, so the next story is The Shattered States Era by Grace Fung. Uh, you wanted me to write down a quote. So do you want me to read yeah. the quote? Okay, yeah. so, because this was awesome. We learned last week, we talked about last week, we learned, but you all may have already known. Um... We learned about Kyodai, who was that which was taken, which was the kami that was taken by Konda. And uh, when Michiko released Kyodai, 
Kyodai was able to work with Michiko to kind of bring balance back to the plane again and end the Kami War yeah. that was occurring because Konda had stolen Kyodai. Um, and there was a lot of prosperity and etc. that followed. So the quote is she, referring to Kyodai, so she stripped the Konda family of their hereditary duty as rulers. From then on, they would be ordinary citizens, and the emperor would never again be chosen by blood. Now, the kami, the kami would elect rulers for their noble qualities and commitment to the nation. Which is so cool. Very cool. I know that you want to talk about that. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's cool because it, it actually lays out, um, the, the, uh, like, uh, the scratching of the surface of the process of, like, dynasties, dynasties turning into democracies, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, but it does it in, like, a fun, you know, fable -y kind of way. Yeah. Um, that's, that's basically like, look, um, if you don't have everybody's best interest in mind, you don't get to rule. Yeah. It, you know, it's that, that'll be taken from you, that right. And, um, that won't be a thing that anyone gets to do now. Yeah. Now it'll be something different. Right. What's actually best for the people as opposed to who was born next in line from right. the last person, even though they don't necessarily have the qualities that are required in a leader, because God forbid, right. that's an actual thing that we need or care about. Right. So now the, the commies will decide, you know, um, and which is awesome on top of it. Like I said, it's, it, it's, it's, what it's talking about is a little thing, but what it means is a gigantic thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Because its actual parallel is to, you know, the the difference between land and people being ruled by monarchists <laughs> that are that are, you know, put on the throne because of their bloodline and then just um the the power being shifted to people who are discerning i guess sure. and and um and are then being trusted to make determinations as to um someone's worthiness yeah. to rule yeah and then those people know what needs to be done, care about getting done what needs to be done right. for the betterment of the society and the individuals and etc. So, yeah, really, really cool uh, that they were able to add that in. And then I just uh, also this story kind of talked about the fact um, because the Shattered States era is shown on the hilt of a sword which was awesome. I mean, that was gorgeous yeah. artwork. Not that any of these, well, there is one of these that I did not like, and we'll talk about it when we get there, but every other piece of art was amazing. Whether, whether this one was super detailed and it looked like it was real, like it looked like I could just reach out and pick up this sword right out of my computer screen, <laughs> right? Some of these others were very obviously drawn or, um, like looked like they were sewn or or um I don't I don't know the terminology. Or Thank or you. Whatever. whatever it happens to be. Um crocheted, etc. Yeah. Um but this looked real. It looked like I could just grab out and like feel that texture on the hilt. It looked amazing. So I loved that a lot. Um but this story also talked about the fact that that sword was commissioned because uh, by the current rulers so that they wouldn't lose sight of what happened in the past and so that they wouldn't repeat their mistakes or I think the quote was wouldn't lose sight and repeat the sins of the past. And what we find out from that is that the current emperor is kind of missing which is problematic. <laughs> um, and so yeah. uh, we, from what I have seen, I've not read it yet myself, but from the previews that I have read uh, in the main stories for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, we will get into that a little bit more. So stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. We'll talk about it. But 
that might be a few weeks away. So, like I said, subscribe, ring the bell, etc. But what we really wanted to talk about regarding those two things was how cool it was that... Oh, I'll get to that in a minute, oh, I think. Okay. If, if, I if you're talking about... forgetting about it. No, no, no. You're talking about okay. this? This aspect of it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. I appreciate it, though. Okay. Because the next story, Era of Enlightenment by Grace Fung... Did you have more to talk about besides that with yeah. the other story? Okay. So Era of Enlightenment by Grace Fung as well talks about what Amy was getting at. Is that there's... It, the aspect of, like, no more monarchy rule, right, or dynastic rule. It's now whoever is actually going to do what is right. And they are the ones who would get elected. And or is qualified <laughs> for the position. And I said that to Amy. I was like, wouldn't that be nice that, like, a person who's actually qualified for the job is the one that gets picked, and that's who actually gets voted for, or at least that's why that person is elected is because you're picking the one who is the best for that particular job. Wouldn't that be great and nice to see for once? Um, but that combined From a political with... political standpoint, because of course, you know, um, that, you know, that's not a, a hiring practice, you know, across the board. Yeah. That's just, you know, yeah. the way politics happens to end up a lot of the time is right. that, you know... Um, people are given those jobs because, you know, they pay money or they know the person or whatever. And or so pay money to the right person, right. etc. Yeah. And so there was that, but that was from, that was from the Shattered States era. Now into the era of enlightenment, the other thing that was like, oh, wouldn't that be nice, is that laws were being passed by these new politicians or these new rulers that was actually allowing equality for all humans and uh, or mortals and kami alike again god forbid right <laughs> yeah. um but that was very my said to amy i'm like wow we really are reading fantasy stories huh it, which is unfortunate by the way right. don't please don't misunderstand me when i say like that would be amazing <laughs> uh it's just not what we're currently dealing with um, and we are all dealing with it, whether we want to believe that or not. Um, so it, that was cool that that this place is so far just being portrayed as like it has become a paradise, essentially. Like now that Kunda is not here to mess things up by stealing a kami and making the other kami like Okagachi, etc., come in and try to kill everybody. There's actual like peace and prosperity going on on this plane. So, as the joke used to be, we haven't really talked about that a lot, but, like, um, I think the last time it was really talked about was, like, Kaladesh. Um, it was, like, you know, it was a two-set block or three-set block, and it was, like, the first set is going to be us being introduced to this cool new plane. Let's check out this cool new plane that we're going to be on. And then in the next set, it was, like, how are they going to mess it up? What are they going to do? <laughs> what are they going to bring in to destroy this awesome place that we just learned about right. and that we love so that much? they made so great. Now <laughs> it's going to be shat on <laughs> yeah. by somebody. Yep. So with Kaladesh, it was like, well, here comes Tezzeret and all this other nonsense. So, <laughs> yeah. That, anyway, that's that. So yeah. this place kind of makes me feel similarly where it's like, wow, this place is amazing. What are they going to do to it? <laughs> you know, like, what? what's the conflict of this set about? And we may get there at least original, like, a little bit, but in the coming stories. Um, but I loved that, like, I, I guess maybe it's a little bit of this, because the Era of Enlightenment talks about the fact that there are these, like, rifts opening up, essentially. Which, I mean, the last time that happened in, like, Time Spiral Block, that wasn't a bad thing, right? Nothing bad happened there. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh... We're good. These, these rifts were opening and from the spirit realm. And Kami were coming through and were like really confused as to where they were. And I forget who it was, but people, people in general or somebody in particular was determining that, I think it was, I guess, maybe the monks of, of the Jukai or whatever, um, were determining that the two realms were going to eventually just merge and become one. And... So they needed to create these merge gates 
at the rifts. They like constructed these merge gates that were erected so that new kami coming through would be coming through these gates. They would be welcomed by some of the mortals on the other side who were literally there for that exact purpose. And they were welcomed into the unified plane, as it was called. Again, prosperity, right? Peace, etc. So it seems really cool, but there's like that underlying aspect of like, there are rifts though. <laughs> yeah. And you're talking about these two planes are going to eventually become one. And like, that's not, that's not typically a great thing. But I mean, it's tonight the night. <laughs> when to become one. Jesus. No, thank God it's not. Uh, and I'm assuming that we will get to stories about that, and maybe there will be a night awesome. where the two become one. <laughs> um, then we have the next story, Teachings of the Kirin by Emily T uh, Tang. Excuse me. Wait, I wanted to talk about Please. that one a little bit. Please, in definitely. A serious yes. Today. Oh, why? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... We were talking about the actual, like, political implications of all of these things. Um, so I think I should talk about this a little bit, too. Unification is a big deal, right? Um, because that can create um, a golden age, right? Of just, you know, a, a, a prospering economy. Um, peace, you know, within a, a country or something like that. Um, because everybody's together, right? And as we read, per seemingly equal, like treated equally as well, which right. is, you know, again, God forbid. But. but there's also the other side of that coin is, okay, uh, if there's a large number of people who are now unified and they're ruled by a particular person. How soon does that person become somebody who starts to abuse their power? Because um, it was a very common practice in the past, in the olden times, for um, people to artificially create unity <laughs> for the sake of giving themselves more power yep. over a larger population of people. Yeah. Um, and obviously that has a lot of negative consequences. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll be interested to see where that goes next. I yeah. Guess. I think that's a that's a running theme with these as well, is that like I'm enjoying reading these saga stories because it's getting me excited for like where we're going, right? Learning about where we've been and kind of a bit of what's been happening since and like getting me to like this point, I guess you're all looking at it from this way, right? So we start here getting me to about this point and now I want to know what's going on here, right? <laughs> like what's going to happen in this space now? That flap is just... Exactly. Yep. Wiley. It's so enticing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very interested to see where that goes. And so this one was, this saga story was cool, but there's not really a ton for us to talk about with it. Uh, Teachings of the Kirin by Emily Tang, as I mentioned earlier, it, it is the second story or second saga story that we've read where it discusses creatures obtaining a new form, right? Cause we had the dragons and now we have the Araki, but this one is, it's unclear if it is a fable or reality, right? Because it's kind of a bit of like a children's story kind of shown to us as like, it kind of shown to us in um, some of the artwork, if you will, or the vase that is being made on this art depicts the Iraqi with no legs and one set of arms and that that kind of talks about the story of the Iraqi and how they used to have legs and two sets of arms, but they gave those up to the Kami to be able to gain their connection back. But again, the, the saga story kind of says like, but did that really happen? Or was that just a story that adults tell children to make sure that the children kind of maintain 
fealty and reverence. Um, reverence thank you to the to the kami because they're the ones that give them power. And I'd like to think it's a little bit of both, but it, the story definitely leaves it kind of open ended and up to your interpretation because it says it's unclear as to what it actually is. Well, and the thing is, too, I mean, as somebody who loves history as much as I do, <laughs> um, I can say that fables or legends are usually more historical than you think. Yeah. And that history is usually less correct than you think. <laughs> so... People usually think of them as being almost opposites, right? One's real, one's fake. I think of them as being more like here mm -hmm. on, on the line of, of reality, right? Where this is just straight up no, and this is, this is what actually happened, right? So I think history is here, and fables and legends are here. <laughs> um, I sure. think they're very close together. Because I think fables and legends are based on things that really happened or people that really lived. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're part of history for those reasons as well as the fact that they're told um, changes the course of the future. Okay. So when those things really happened or those people really lived, it was here on the timeline. And so the stories that get told are maybe muddled up and weird by the time you're all the way down here. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's purposeful and maybe it's not because both are true yeah. in a lot of different <laughs> uh, scenarios, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but... That doesn't make it entirely fake, right? And by the time you're here on the timeline, the fact that those stories were told all throughout changes the culture, changes the traditions, changes the people, the way they act, the things they do, um, the way they think, philosophy, um, commerce, everything is in some ways affected by that if it's a story that is impactful enough on a culture, right? So uh, the, the, the impact that those stories have had, um, regardless of their level of truth, um, changes reality enough and is impactful enough on future generations that at that point they're more real than they ever were when they were originally said and made. Right. And it, <clears throat> I had to look back in my notes, so I apologize if I looked distracted. But we talked about this last week to a degree as well with the saga of the life of Toshiro Umezawa. Because as we discussed when we were talking about that, Tashira was kind of an asshole, right? And yet, the saga that depicts him and the people that would t would talk about him in this modern era on Kamigawa are going to talk about him very happily. They're going to be, like, super pleased about all the stuff that's going on. And yet, he wasn't like that. But <laughs> the stories that got passed down kind of depicted him as this hero because he helped Michiko and... Um, oh, God, I'm going to forget the name. No, that which was taken, what's your name? <laughs> God damn it. It's written here. I know it is. Kyo... Kyo... Oh, God. Kyodai. I was like, Kyosei? No. Kyodai. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I found it. Um, that he helped Michiko and Kyodai kind of merge and end the Kami War. So, I mean, that's pretty good, and he definitely yeah. deserves praise for that. But that doesn't mean that he was always this, like, noble and amazing figure... But that's how the stories were passed down, and that is how he is now remembered and kind of given that reverence, if you will, right. like you mentioned earlier. So. And stories falsely create 
that separation between good and evil. That doesn't really exist, right? It's just everybody's here, everybody's doing stuff, and they hope that what they're doing is helping instead of hindering. And uh, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's arguably, that's the reality that's, that's true, right? <laughs> and the story is um, this person's the hero, this person's the villain, and in the end everything works out. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the way that we usually and always see it. But um, I think it's much more like I, you know, described earlier where the impact that those stories have and the impact that history has. Because at the same time, um, you know, whatever is written in your history textbook uh, isn't really what happened. It's it's. History is written by the victors, right? They always say something like that, so like... And it's not the victors, it's people. People are fallible. I was going to say they're not infallible. Yeah, very good point. People yeah. have motives. People have funding from other people that who, have motives. Right, who ask, <laughs> yeah, who ask for certain things to be left out or put in or... Yeah, yeah. So, you know... Um, vantage point matters, right? And realistically speaking, knowing the past is, is just knowing the tip of the iceberg. And I think that's why I like history so much, is because I know that what I know isn't the truth. It's just history. Sure. And... And because I know history, when I know it, because I don't, <laughs> I don't uh, say I'm a historian or anything, but when I know history, knowing history still leaves so much mystery because you're only knowing what they want you to know. You're only knowing a small portion of it, or you're only knowing a certain vantage point, or you're only knowing um, of the people but not really of what they did, or you're knowing uh, of what happened but you're not necessarily knowing who facilitated it. You know, there's just all of these ways that what you know to be true of history is is really just a piece of what history actually is. The, and knowing history really just means that, like, there's this hunger to know more that will never be sati satiated. Sure. Because history was recorded. And so however it was recorded is the way you get to know it. Right, and by whomever it right. was recorded and, by. And maybe, and maybe there's enough um, variance in sources and things like that where, um, and or other things like carbon dating and stuff like that that can confirm certain things and um, prove other things wrong, right? Um, but again, that's still just knowing part of it there's still this part that's missing that you'll never get to know. And, like, that's what's cool about history is, is, like, you can know everything that there is to know, but still not really know it, like, what actually happened, um, the way that people did when they were there. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't have a, a good way of transitioning to the next story, but Sorry. no, yeah. don't worry about it. I, I, it doesn't always have to be like a perfect transition, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and I'm sure that there are people who went in the past when I've been like, great transition. Other people are like, that was real dumb. Cause that's you know, just how I do things sometimes. Oh, wow. Welcome to it. Come, come join us on stream. Uh, anyway, so, uh, the fifth, the, the penultimate of these stories is the modern age by Emily Tang. 
This is the one I promised I would talk about it. This is the art that I did not enjoy. I mean, my God, it is real ugly. <laughs> and that's not, that's not taking anything away from the artist who drew it. I think the artist who drew it did exactly what they were supposed to do. <laughs> I just think that oh, what they were... This one? Yeah, it was the Tron one. You said it looked like Tron. Oh, oh, yeah. I just think it's ugly as sin. It just, like, it's... I thought it was cool. Well, good. I'm glad somebody liked it. <laughs> I did. I just didn't enjoy it. Like, especially when you look at all of the other arts that were depicted for all of these sagas. The, the f other five in this video and the four from last week, they all depict, like, things that you could actually imagine seeing. Mm -hmm. And yet this is, like, shitty 1980s video game graphics of, like, <laughs> blocks moving along a flat plane. And, you know, it's like I'm playing that tank game on, on an old-ass computer again. It's just very ugly. And I get that it is talking about the modern era, and that's kind of where we are on Kamigawa. Um, but, but I think it's also important that <clears throat> this was the only story, to my knowledge, that the, the art is not a one-to-one -one with what's actually being talked about in the story. Because the, the art isn't depicting something that happened being replicated in some way to discuss history. So it's not showing, like, it talks about advances in technology, but it doesn't say that the advances in technology look like that art does. Meanwhile, the next story, Baseju Reaches Skyward, shows a tree reaching skyward being depicted in that way. Or um, the teachings of the Kirin showing a vase that depicts the story of the Iraqi in some capacity on a vase. Like, that saga seems different than every other saga because it's not actually discussing something historic, something that occurred that is now being retold through this imagery, I feel like. Okay. I would argue that it's doing that in a much more detached kind of way. Okay. But I feel like it still is, because I think if you're reading all of these sagas together, because I don't want to say if you're relying solely on that one saga, but if, if you're reading all of these sagas together, my interpretation of the collective story is transition and change. Um, and, 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 you know, they talked about the kami completely changing the way that they look and are, right? Just, just the dragons, but yes, the kami dragons, yes. And it was just showing how the plane has also done that. Yeah, and, and it requires its inhabitants to adapt in that way. It seems. The, the kami, and then, as we kind of read in some of these, the, the people as well, the mortals, if you will. And I didn't dislike the story. I just don't think the art followed along with all the other arts. That's all, that's all I'm implying. That, like, it, it showed blocky data images. Okay? That's not at all what the story talked about. Whereas the other stories talked about things, and then the last paragraph of a lot of these stories discussed what's depicted in the art. This didn't, because you couldn't. It was just, it's blocky and sci-fi-y and tech, techy and or whatever. In, was like, in my mind, it was the new landscape, essentially. It's not a specific picture of a specific place. But it is to give you the feel of what the plane looks like. To give you oh, the feel I of mean, what the... What your surroundings would be or feel like or look like if you were there. Okay. I. But it was digital. Like, I assume, it, it's not what the world, like, the ground isn't digital. Is that what you're trying to, I, I don't, maybe I'm not understanding what you're saying. <laughs> it's, it's an abstract way of conveying that the landscape and the 
mood and the subject matter and the philosophies and the culture as a whole has changed. Okay. Entirely. Okay. Interesting. That's my interpretation. That's fair. And if you have a different interpretation, if you agree with one of us over the other, uh, as always, we want to, with anything, we want to hear from you. I, when I read this story, to get to the actual content of the story, when I read this story, the story read as, uh, I had a lot of anxiety reading this story, as opposed to all the other ones. As I talked about with some of these other stories, it was like, wow, this place is a paradise, right? I mentioned that earlier because I was really happy and excited with what they were talking about. This was like, oh no, you're messing it up. Don't do those things. That's scary and dangerous. And so that this is where it kind of led me to that moment of like, oh, this is what they're going to do to it, right? This is how they're going to stop Mess it on up. their good thing. Yeah, because it, it, it seems like, you know, they're, it, it kind of broke it down into three different groups. And again, this could be mirrored into the current timeline as well. Um, but there are the kind of the folks who are fans of the status quo who are the elite and the warlords and etc. who have a lot of power. Then you have the Aki and other types who are working off of the Aki inventions that are producing and benefiting from these technological advancements. And they are kind of amassing their own version of power through technology, which is kind of undermining the folks who are fans of the status quo the elite and the warlords. And it's kind of stripping power from them and distributing it or, or keeping it with these folks who are, who were typically lower on the ladder, or lower on the totem pole, if you will. And now those people are happy because, hey, power is actually being somewhat more distributed and, and more available for the regular folk that aren't elites and warlords. And of course, unsurprisingly, the elites and warlords are upset about it because they're like, hey, give us back our power. You don't get to just take our stuff like that. We need it because we need to keep up our, our stranglehold on this power. But then there's the third group. And the third group, uh, calling themselves the Order of Jukai, are stepping forward and they're saying, uh, you, Aki, realize that like you're taking power you're amassing power with these new technological advancements, but one of the ways that you're doing that is by drawing power from the spirit realm. Do, do you even know what you're doing? Because that's real dangerous. Right. You're do just you like... Know the <laughs> consequences that something like that would have? And it, it seems like they don't, because it's just like, oh, we could just do whatever we want. And it's, it's reminiscent, and again, I, I, I don't mean to get political if you feel like this is getting political, but it, it reminds me of, I'm not going to remember the name of it, but we watched that like Netflix documentary about um, the social media era and all the gathering of um, data on individuals, like your, your demographic data and your search history and etc., like getting compiled by all of these um, social media apps and things like that, and now being distributed to the highest bidder, whoever might want to purchase that information Whatever for. company wants to sell you on something. Company or government, foreign or domestic. Right. Like, whatever it happens to be. And, like, that's real dangerous. And yet the companies that are doing it are just like, oh, well, we're making money. It doesn't really, you know, some of the people, right? I'm not saying automatically all of them, no matter what, but they're saying like, hey, we're making money, this is our business, we're doing whatever the hell we want, and yet some other people are going, that's like real messed up, and you're just like, you can't just do that. And so that's what I read this as. And like I said, it made me real anxious reading it, because I was like, holy crap, you're just drawing power from the spirit realm, you have no concept of what you're doing. Meanwhile, these rifts are happening that we read about earlier with the Era of Enlightenment, and like, these rifts are happening, the Kami are coming through, there's a risk of both planes just merging together, which is probably not a good thing. And meanwhile, you're just drawing power from the spirit realm, and you're just like, cool, look at all these technological advancements that we're making. And it's like, but you don't understand the far-reaching ramifications of what you're doing. It seems like that's really dangerous. Yeah, either they don't understand or they don't care. Sure, and either or way. varying levels of both, <laughs> yeah. right? So, yeah. they... 
Yeah, it's real scary to me. And again, the kind of elite and the warlords are more concerned with stopping the technological advancements because it's taking power away from them as opposed to the Order of the Jukai who are like, no, nah, but it's also dangerous though. So like, but what about the real reasons <laughs> why this is important? Yeah. So I was intrigued a lot by the story, and I don't want to I don't want to detract from that by the fact that I didn't like the art. I just didn't right. I didn't enjoy that. But the story, I feel like that was the one that was the most like, hey, by the way, this is probably what we're going to be talking about in these coming stories for a Neon Dynasty. Like this is probably why we're here, and this is the. This is likely going to be the conflict uh, alongside the fact that an emperor is missing, which is a little bit of an issue as well. <laughs> On top of the fact that there's, you know, the, the current parallel of that just being the way things kind of are in the real world for us right now. Yep. So I... As a human race, yeah. basically. Yeah. So I appreciated this story a lot. It just, it being combined with that art was was a bit of a letdown for me because I was so intrigued by the, the far-reaching uh, implications of the story itself. Uh, and so the sixth and final story, I briefly mentioned it earlier, was Baseju Reaches Skyward, also by Emily Tang. And so, I mean, shout-outs to all of these authors because they were incredible. Emily Tang uh, seemingly doing the heaviest of lifting by doing, I think, three, four, five, six of these or so. Um, really nicely done. But honestly, to each and every writer, it, these are great. I enjoyed them a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, But Besager Reaches Skyward I just thought was cool. Like, there's not a ton to talk about with it. Um, it's like the epitome of life finds a way. Um, I liked the, the, that it kind of related back to the Iraqi story, the teachings of the Kirin one, where the Iraqi were cut off from the, the uh, kami of the forest because of um, the city that was growing around Baseju, basically, which is the, the, the tree, the remaining tree from the uh, Jukai forest. And, or, yeah, Jukai forest. And the tree itself was required to be left there. Like, the kami were getting pissed off, and I mentioned to you, it was very similar to the gruel on Ravnica, where this city is expanding and expanding and expanding, and meanwhile, cutting down more and more of the forest. Again, where could we have possibly heard anything like that before in the, in the real world? Not, not once has that ever occurred. Um, but it meant that the Araki and the, or more, the spirits, the, ki the uh, kami... There's so many different Araki, Kirin, Kami. <laughs> the Kami that lived in the forest were getting upset with the expansion of this city. And so they were attacking the city and the builders and like breaking down what was being built up, which is very gruel of them. So yeah. I know Amy's a big fan. Um, but so the... I'm, I'm not a fan of destroying buildings. Well... But I am a you know, fan of, you know, having some kind of environmental responsibility for the things that you do. And so a compromise was actually reached that any building that was currently going on could continue, but there would be no further expansion permitted. And so, again, similar to the modern age, <clears throat> we as New Yorkers, I will mention the island of Manhattan, uh, rings true to me in this. They couldn't expand out anymore. So which way did they go? Up. And they made skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. And so Baseju, which was a tree that was then kind of dwarfed by all of these buildings that had been dormant for however long they said. Thousands of years, hundreds of years, whatever. Just grew. It was like, oh, you put up these buildings. Well, I'm the last remaining tree in this area from the Jukai Forest, so nope. And then it grew up and dwarfed all the skyscrapers. And so the builders were like, holy crap, all right, let's keep building up our skyscrapers. So they built up the skyscrapers more, and the tree went, no, and then grew itself bigger. <laughs> and now its branches and its growth, it mentioned at the end of the story, is kind of like permanently eclipsing parts of this city. Again, nature kind of, you know, given the big F you to the city and to the builders and to the people who are trying to be like, well, you know, who cares about the forest? We're just yeah. going to do whatever we want. Uh, well, and nowadays, I'm sure it would be uh, sought after to have a gigantic tree be the thing that's providing shade over your windows in a skyscraper. 
right? But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, what does it do to property values when all of a sudden you can't sure. get any sunlight in through your windows <laughs> because yeah. your windows are all blocked up with things? Yeah. And usually they're blocked up with, you know, other buildings or, um, you know, offshooting structures of some kind that, you know, you're supposed to make sure are not impeding other people's ability to enjoy the the sunlight coming in through their windows. Right. I mean, you could even, like on a smaller scale, you could even talk about somebody whose like neighbor's tree is overgrown into a particular area. And so it's like yeah, impeding. you want to talk about more of a suburban area. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Do, do you? Did, is that an indication of where we may have grown up? Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's fine. So, so yeah, that I thought that was really cool. I mean, again, very fantasy, but awesome in the same in the same capacity. Uh, and the art, like when I first looked at the art, I didn't know where this story was going, and I was just like, wow. I was like, the tree is like here, but like there's this huge section down here which is like the roots, and it just seems really weird. But when I read the story, I was like, oh. <laughs> I get it now, yeah, and it really makes cool. so much more sense. It's awesome. So Well, and it's like what you said earlier about it. Um, you were like, life finds a way. So I guess it's kind of akin to like a life tree. Sure. Tree of life sure. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I did read up when we originally um, found out about the era and location of where the... Kamigawa story stories are supposed to be uh, like based on. Um, I did read up a little bit on um, th there was a there was a tree spirit um, that was like really sought after, um, but I couldn't really find. I could find a lot of images of it um, that were really ranged in similarity to one another. Um, but I really didn't find out that much about it. Um, like, I don't know the stories of this tree spirit or right. if there was, you know, a whole bunch of tree spirits or if it was just one really, or right. I, I don't know enough about the details. So well, if somebody does know, I would love to hear it. <clears throat> And I was going to say, don't forget, right, in the original Kamigawa stories, we had the Kodama, the Kodama of the center tree, the Kodama of the north tree, that were um, kami that that kind of embodied those particular things. So it, Which is it, why I originally right. looked it up in the first place. Well, and that's what I was going to say. So that's even more indicative that you were going down the right path, right? That you were you were being led I in the right direction. I was trying to, but yeah. there wasn't enough there, or at least I didn't know how to find it. So like Amy said, if you want to flex your research muscles or maybe yeah. you know in some capacity, go ahead. Uh, let us know. We would love to hear from you. And honestly, anything and, any, and everything, as we talked about, we truly that light up that comment section. As yeah. many comments as your little fingers can type out or, or <laughs> tap out or whatever, uh, let us know because that is going to be the end of this particular video. I loved these. Like I said, I want, I truly want uh, the writers to do this every time there are sagas in the future. I want saga stories. I want these little bite sized like I, just anything that I can get that's like this, give it to me all the time. I want it because this was amazing, right? And as I promised, our plan is to get back to those main stories next week. And, and it's not really the main stories, right? The uh, Kaito Origins is like a prequel story. So we're hoping to get to those next week. I don't think there are going to be any more um, saga stories, although I didn't think that last week either. So we shall see. Um, but hopefully we are done with these. I don't imagine there's more than 10 sagas in the whole set. Um, and so that's kind of what leads me to believe we're probably done. Um, but I do love that they're here because again, for people like us who were not as involved with reading the stories back then, it's really nice to have this refresher now, uh, to give us an idea of where we've come from and now where we're going as well. Right. So, like like you were talking about, which is why even, I pointed this way when I said that. Even though they may be different as all hell. Sure. <laughs> but but regardless, uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm excited. I'm looking forward right. to it. So let's find out about Kaito hopefully next week and then the week after. And then we can get into these main stories. It may take us a while, but as we said, if you weren't here for the last stories that we reviewed, that I'm now completely forgetting what they were. Uh, what were they? The, the, 
the oh the the ones. Crimson Vow. Oh, the Crimson oh, wow. Vow stories. Um, like we were literally just talking about it. No, we <laughs> no when, when we were doing the Midnight Hunt and the Crimson Vow stories, we are going to do them one a week for as long as it takes. So we may be a little late in terms of when they're released, but the first two stories were released on the same day when we still have, we personally still haven't done the, um, the origin stories or hadn't finished these saga stories. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of stories coming out, but we don't want to cheapen and water it down or make our videos like three hours long each. Right. It's going to be a slow process, but we want to give them the time that they deserve. So please bear with us as we do that. We appreciate each and every one of you for giving us that time. And we hope that you enjoy all of these videos that we put out. Like I said, I'm, I'm super excited for them. So yeah, that is going to be the end of this particular video. Thank you all so very much for watching. Please do not forget that when you leave comments down below, like Amy mentioned multitudes of times, that is a great way for all of you to join in with us as we share our appreciation for returning to this plane that we have not been on and haven't, for us, have not read these original stories at all mm -hmm. uh, and continue to show off our... Hashtag Vorthos Pride. That's right. Keep it going. We really appreciate it. We appreciate each and every one of you for being here uh, give us any and all thoughts that you have on the whole concept of how we're doing this and stuff as well. Um, we, we always appreciate feedback. Right. So definitely, uh, give us that. But yeah, uh, otherwise, like I said, don't forget to join us on streams and check out our other channels linked down in the description box below as well. But for now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I've been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.